it's uh, 6 31 p.m. Present, we have uh, myself, Israel Rivera, um, Counselor Todd McGee, Counselor uh, Cocaine Givner, who is finishing up a coffee for herself or a tea. 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 There you go. Tea. Where did I go in? <laughs> and we, and present with us, we have Counselor Jenny Rivera um, and Counselor Jose Maldonado Velez, along with the city engineer, Bob Parent, um, Bike Head Committee member, Shannon. What was it again? Bliven. Um, name again, I'm sorry. Marie? Deborah Bruno. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm still learning. I'm sorry. And you, madam? Susan Woods. Okay, thank you. Um, so, in order to take, um, I'll take up an order to. Take up item one off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, item one is uh, was filed by Councilor uh, Jenny Rivera on March 15, um, 2022. The order the order is that um, order that the street number, which is currently 380R Dwight Street, um, 021-001-005, changed to 382 Dwight Street. Confusion between buildings, map lot 021-01-003, and the derelict the direct, I'm, I'm assuming direct, <coughs> direct neighbor has a detrimental impact on public safety and has led to confusion by HGE and other utility service providers. Uh, I believe um, the city engineer, uh, Mr. Rob Parent, or Bob Parent, um, uh, responded right via email and he's here present. Um, I could read what he wrote, but he could actually elaborate if he'd like to, whichever one. Bob, you want to come in and sit? And, yeah. Yeah. Come on. There you go. Sit. Come on. Sit down. Relax. So, does somebody have to spend the rules or? No, no. Okay. Because no, it's under discussion. So All right, then. Perfect. So we're under discussion. Yeah. And just make sure, Bob, that the uh, things on the side. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. So item number one regarding the address change um, relative to 380 Dwight Street. Um, council members may or may not be aware that the city engineer has the responsibility for assigning addresses for new street addresses, but does not have the authority to change street addresses once the addresses have been established. And I presume that's really because of the potential the impact that it has to a business or a resident, particularly if they've been using that address for a long period of time, it can be particularly disruptive. Um, so the owners of uh, 380 Dwight had approached myself. I think they had talked to the fire department as well about whether or not we felt changing the address at 380R uh, would be beneficial because it does create quite a bit of confusion uh, from an uh, uh, emergency response st standpoint. Um, all the parcels in the city are part of the state E911 database so when somebody calls in with an emergency they report an address that database will actually allow a public safety official to go right to the center point of that parcel when that happens though in this case if it's 380 versus 380r it can be very confusing where mm. that address where that location is um, so and I did speak with the chief regarding that uh, Fire Department very much um, would like to eliminate this confusion, if at all possible, because it does create a problem with where does a vehicle go? Do you go to the front building, the rear building? Is it 380? Is it 380R? Putting a unique address of 382 would make it very clear that it pertains to the rear building, and they would know immediately where they would have to respond. In this particular case, and, and council may or may not be aware of some of the current status of 380R, that building is currently in not very good shape. Um, I've inspected the exterior of the building once as part of the, the survey board, um, which is one of the roles that I serve on with the fire chief. And we've identif identified a number of defects with the building. We have brought them to the attention of the building owner um, to the best of my um, understanding, and I spoke with the building commissioner today, that building owner has not been responsive to the issues with the building and is not currently running any type of an active business in that building either. 
So if there was a concern about impacting you know, a business that's used that address for a long period of time, um, that's clearly not the case because we actually have a property owner and a building owner there who is really um, doing nothing with the property at this point and not even maintaining the, the, the property at this point. So um, I would see the less of an impact on a property owner like that than you might if, again, it was a, an established property owner who was running an active business out of that property. Um, I would like to recognize uh, Councillor Puello, or Puello, whichever one, um, and then Chief Pratt as well. Um, I would also like to give Jenny, Councillor Jenny Rivera, the maker of the order, the opportunity to kind of speak on the matter if she would like to. Thank you, Cher. Um, so I had gotten an email from Mark Jarvis, I believe. Yes, Mark Jarvis. He's the president. Um, mm. When you? We lost you. Is that on our side? I, I'm not sure. I you Jenny, I think we lost you. Oh, now it's gone. Oh, Man, it's okay. not we too good. We just got you back. I did write to him and ask him if he could um, be present and if you know if he could elaborate on it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But that's the most I got um, off of the email. He did say, like I said, that he spoke to Bob, and Bob did recommend um, an order being filed. All right. And sorry, my I, internet's acting up. I didn't hear the first part completely, but I kind of have an understanding somewhat of what. So I, I'm assuming that what she said is that she reached out to the business owner or to the person that fi that asked her to um, file the order and asked them to be present to kind of elaborate more with regards to the situation. Um, but I feel like uh, the city engineer gave us a, a pretty good breakdown and maybe we could figure out what the next steps would be, which would be probably to file another, uh, move it to ordinance to change? Yeah, it's an ordinance. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it would need necessarily be a formal ordinance, but a decision by the city council because street addresses do not, do not reside within the city ordinances. So to change a street address, I don't think the vehicle and certainly city solicitor's office could weigh in on this, mm -hmm. but I think it would strictly be an order issued to change the address from the current address of 380R to 382, and then I, as city engineer, would act upon that. So, so we we need an order to do that. You're saying, I, Bob, or I I kind of feel like the order that she filed right, is the order. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess if we could just probably approve it then, and he could just. Um, or move it to full council. Yeah, but I think someone had questions. Uh, any hands up? I thought you said. Uh, mm, no, no. No. Okay. Councilor Rivera. It's a motion to recommend to full council to vote on. Unless you have a question. I mean, I just a um, wanted. So there's no 382 White Street? No, currently? there curr cur currently is not any 382. Over a number? <laughs> there are wide gaps in addresses, and that's one mm -hmm. of the things I have to do every time there's a new parcel or a new building or some modification, mm -hmm. is to make certain that new addresses make sense. Mm -hmm. And this address would make sense within the sequence of addresses on Dwight Street. Okay. <coughs> well, um, I'd like to motion to send it to council for a vote. For a full council make a, vote. Make a motion to approve the change for of 380R to 382 as recommended by the engineer. I second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. <coughs> Anyone opposed? <coughs> oh, too, sorry. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Take up item two. Second. Uh, take up item two. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> I got I couldn't brain freeze real quick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, anyone opposed? No. Okay, so item two is uh, was filed uh, March 15th, uh, 2022 by uh, uh, President of the Council, uh, Mr. McGee, that the legal department review the alleyway near 5 Fairfield Ave to determine if the city 
if it is city property and that the DBW repair the fence a lot alley from its vehicles going through see attached photo but I mean we yeah. there was a photo at the moment <laughs> so uh, I would give you the opportunity to elaborate I guess yep so uh, I, I do believe the homeowner from uh, five Fairfield is here I'd ask to suspend the rules to allow her to speak as well um, mainly I know with alleyways you know the homeowner owns up to the middle and then the other homeowner on the other side owns up to that middle but the uniqueness here is although it is an alleyway as, as Bob has said the real issue is it's we have city vehicles going through there and it is it's not if you see the photo it's, it's not like paved or anything it, it's mud mm. and it's all off-centered and when they're going through to pick up trash or, or what have you uh, unfortunately, they have hit this lady's fence several times. She put up another new fence. They hit that one. So although it's not city property, city vehicles are going through damaging residential property. So, yeah, we don't, we don't own it, but we sure have to make sure we don't hurt, you know, <laughs> the property of a, of a homeowner. Uh, so I, I'd like to suspend the rules and, and, and offer uh, the constituent to yeah. speak. I second. Yeah, I second too. Uh, all, right. <laughs> all, all those in favor. All, we, uh, all right, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Anyone opposed? Yeah. So. <laughs> Hello, my name is Susan Woods. And I live at 5 Fairfield Avenue. My home is about uh, five feet away from the alley. The alley was built for horse and buggies. Mm. It was not built for dump trucks and uh, plows and huge riggers that the GNE contracts with. Um, it is caused, I have a bulge in my basement because of the trucks and my neighbor behind me for decades has dumped all of her garden soil, which has caused the mud. I purchased the house about 28 years ago, and it was flat, and I could wash my car out there. There was flat, hard, you know, small stones. And you can look up at the other end of the alley where it's flat with the hard stones. Um, due to the soil and the mud buildup is what's caused this. I, for years, I put in cinder blocks to lift mm -hmm. up the side of my part. The, for decades, I have asked the DPW to please help me with this. I have asked the tax people, I think it was Mrs. Brunel, came and looked at the bulge in my basement. My homeowners will not pay for it. They said it's the city's fault, which it is. They caused the damage to my basement. Hmm. The city said it's homeowners. The city said it's my responsibility to clean up all of that mud and to, f to do everything to the alley. It's my responsibility. I have cleaned up that alley. I have mowed it. I am the only one on my block, except for my next door neighbor who takes care of my property. I don't want to live in a dump. Mm -hmm. I live in a dump because of the alley. I'm 77 years old. I have been shoveling that mud off of the sidewalk. The mud goes onto the tree belt. The dump trucks go over my tree belt. Mm. I have people coming in and I pay them to put grass seed every year in the tree belt that the trucks go over. Mm. And they said, it's your property, you take care of it. That's what the city says. They gave me $80 years ago to replace the picket fence. And I pay 
my taxes are so high now. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I am, I had a custom, I live in a historic street and I'm ashamed to live there. Mm. And that's historic. It's unfortunate because it's a beautiful street. Isn't it unfortunate? <clears throat> It's a beautiful street. I love Holyoke. My mayor, my grandfather was the mayor of Holyoke mm. for two terms back when it was a bustling paper metropolis. That's unfortunate. Thank you for listening. I get emotional. No worries. I would too. I would be upset too. Um, so. And the uh, picket fence is now broken on the bottom. Again. The mud is pushed <laughs> up against the fence. Two years old fence. Thank you. Yeah, I, no, thank you. We can put our trash out in front of our house like everybody else. Yeah, there's no, there's no simple answer to this one. Right. Because it is an alleyway, and it, legal will tell you you, yeah. can't, you can't go onto the property and fix it because then you'll be taken on liability. Mm -hmm. But the real problem is you have trucks going through the alleyway, whether it's plowing or what have you, which has caused damage. So I think we need legal to weigh in to then allow DPW or whatever agreement they can possibly come up with. One to maybe, I'm, you know, I am an attorney, but I'm not gonna speak for our legal department, but maybe an agreement between the homeowner and the city allowing DPW maybe, maybe to clean up that front part so it's flat again and then allow for it to, to go forward. As far as the neighbor, I mean, if the neighbor's dumping that stuff, are they still doing it or? No, no she's too old to do right. So do maybe it. that resolves that. There's gonna be no more dirt being dumped there to cause kind of the issue that no, you well, see. It, is, what what is the purpose for the DPW going in and out the alley? Trash. trash. For trash? Yeah, and no plowing. Purpose. Because everybody else. What, why don't they? I was gonna say, why doesn't the people put the trash in front of the house? Exactly. That, that's 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 not for us to say. We really don't have everybody that ability. Everybody else does it. Yeah. My everybody my only thing is to can put it out in front of. Yeah. Their, well, can we, can we fix the side by her house? Right, but so if, this, if I, the thing is though, if we were to fix the stuff, right? It's just gonna be broken. Again. It'll it'll get destroyed again. Yeah, I because they're gonna continue going through the pathway. And this also, um, maybe that's something that the uh, DPW can work out with the residents on trash pickup on, yeah. on that, that front. Mm -hmm. We already put our, our leaf bags and recycling out. Mm -hmm. Even apartment buildings put their trash out in front. It's a simple solution. Well, if I may. Okay. Yes, uh, Councilor we'll Givner. money, a lot, uh, the city a lot of money by making extra trips. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilor Givner. Um, so this is a problem in a couple neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So I think this would probably be, we could probably um, address the fence separately, but also That's maybe, minor. maybe file an order if her, um, the G if G her neighbors and agree. And the G&E is taking care of the fence issue because it was their big right. rigor. So if, if all the neighbors agreed, they could probably have a petition to start having their trash pickup out front. Is that like a solution? Because that sounds like a long-term solution. This problem, in fact, doesn't only exist um, in her alley. It exists in quite a few alleys. Right. And um, just because, w you know, one family is, is bothering to mention it, I've had other constituents in Ward 4 who are in, um, behind Stop and Shop have similar, um, have similar issues where the alley is being torn up. It was... It was never paved, so it's making it's damaging the areas around it because of the big trucks. So right. it may make sense to try to figure out how to fix something, but also how to solve this, you know, permanently. I don't, I don't know how we would go about starting that process. I mean, the fence is going to be repaired by HG&E. &E. Mm -hmm. The real issue would be is, you know, we, I would say, table this here to then request legal to see if legal and DPW can enter into a side agreement to fix the front part where all the mud and stuff is mm -hmm. and not put the city in liability as well as the legal department weigh in on the issue of the alleyways and can we do a petition yeah. or something in order to force the trash be put out front and not through the alleyways anymore. Right. If that is a solution. If everybody wants it. 
chances are they do. it'll happen, you know. If nobody wants it, then it gets a little hard. So we're tabling motion to motion to table with those two requests for legal. You second. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? No. Thank you. Uh, motion is tabled. I mean, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Item three, take off the table. Second. Uh, all in favor? Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Um, item three is filed March 15th uh, by uh, Councillor Jordan, co signed by uh, Councillor myself, is Rui Rivera. <laughs> Councillor David Bartley, um, that the DBW repair the fountain at low. God, can we take these out as a package? Yeah, three, take and, three four? and four as a package. Suspend the rules. Uh, just, yeah, so I'll suspend the rules to take a, the uh, three and four as a package. All in favor? Aye. Um, three is that DBW repair the fountain at Laurel Park on Laurel Street. That fountain head was damaged recently and needs to be fixed for Memorial Day opening. And four is. Uh, that the HGNE repair the lighting in the Laurel Park or Laurel Street. That the light in the park needs to be fixed ASAP, and HGNE has fixed it in the past, and their help is needed once again. Um, I filed this order, the same exact two orders, um, about almost a month ago, a month and a half ago. Um, and I guess, well, Councilor Jordan just got asked by a constituent within the neighborhood to also file it. Um, so I decided to put it on again just to somewhat get an update from either DPW or Holyoke, I mean, or Holyoke Gas and Electric. I see that Holyoke Gas and Electric is present at the moment. Not sure if it's particular for this issue, but um, if possible, I would like to ask sure you can. Yeah, uh, Mr. Roy to speak on the light matter, if he can. Hey. So this is speed from the gas and electric. So we, we confirm that um, there is power going to the meter, uh, but that's where our responsibility ends within that park. Um, in speaking with Mr. Parent, he said that they're gonna be bringing in an electrician to investigate further. Um, should it just be that like there's a photo cell in one of the lights that needs to be changed out, we would be able to assist uh, as needed. Um, but I think Bob might, once Bob finds out from his electrician what's needed, like I said, we, we may be able to assist further. Thank you. Do um, you have anything to say? Certainly, I'd confirm what's been said, that that light actually is our responsibility. Right. Uh, I've talked to John Tuig, as has the superintendent, acting superintendent, and he is, he is reaching out to both a plumber and to an electrician to try to troubleshoot the lighting problem. The fountain problem is that not only was the spray head itself damaged, but the piping that feeds the head was damaged, so both of those are going to need to be repaired, and we believe we can get them done by the, you know, the stated Memorial Day deadline. Okay. So, motion that the order be complied with, or, uh, or tabled? Unt unt I'm sorry. I do that a lot. If... They're working on fixing the fountain, okay. and they expect to be done. And the light, they got the electrician coming in. It would be complied with both of them. So I hear a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, items four and five are complied with. Um, take well, up item five. Was well, it three and four? My bad. So take up item five. So item five is uh, filed February. Uh, 15th um, by Councillor Israel Rivera order that the DBW put up warning signs informing drivers of upcoming raised sidewalks so I I filed this order um, and I know you responded um, Mr. Bob Parent um, um, so the reason why I filed the order is because there are signs currently but the signs are kind of the proximity of the signs are closer to the actual um, raised sidewalk they're so close to it that when you actually go to slow down, you're almost at the raised sidewalk already. Granted, people should not be speeding. <laughs> Granted, you should not be speeding, but <laughs> I get that. But like, um, if they could be put out probably like another 10 to 20 feet ahead, so that way someone can see it. So like the one at Dean Tech, it's like right after the under underpass, and like the sign is like right at the underpass-ish. So um, I've already, I mean, not recently, because people have already gotten the wave, but like in the, in the beginning, 
people were posting all over Facebook like I almost ripped off my muffler and this and this and that because first of all people are not paying attention that these things are there mm -hmm. and they're not reading the signs That's so it's like <laughs> it's all problematic <laughs> but it's not just that one though the one on Resnick I think it is too there's one on is it Re Resnick? West Franklin West Franklin there you go that one too is another one that one I didn't even know the other day I was going down and it's just like boom boom oh whoa were you speeding? I, maybe I was. Counselor Rivera. Maybe, maybe I was. I don't know. I, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're going on the hills. I don't know. Uh, I highly doubt it, though. <laughs> no, but ultimately, it's, it's if I'd have seen, if people can see the sign just a little bit more ahead of time, give them a little bit more time to slow down, um, if they are speeding, that would totally be great. But if if not, then it's whatever. I just wanted to try to give people a little <laughs> bit ahead of heads up before the speed bump comes up. And it's not even a real speed bump, but it's just... For some people, um, I see. <laughs> I mean, uh, let me recognize Mr. Parent first. Like, um, certainly, we could. I could pull those signs back another 20, 30, 40 feet. Um, they are high visibility signs, mm -hmm. so if they're not hard to see, from my point of view, um, but you actually have to look. You know, yeah. if, if, yeah. so pulling them back 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet might make a difference. I am not certain that it will necessarily will. Um, I will note just at this opportunity that we have one more raised speed hump to or uh, raised crosswalk to install. That's right at the Dean Crossing location, okay. right where the flashing beacons have yep. been installed. Uh, uh, Joe O'Connor's guys were able to get the beacons in over the winter time. Mm. We ran out of time with the asphalt plants last fall, so we are hoping to be working on that actually during uh, school vacation week. So in a couple of weeks, you should see activity at Dean there, and then there'll be a second one. <laughs> and I do actually think that two of them combined are very it effective makes, yeah. at slowing yeah. people It'll down. It'll be way better. At least between the speed humps. They may still speed on both sides, but in between, it brings them down, and then it keeps them down, I think, most of the time. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. I have a question. So uh, you go first. Councilor Governor. Thank you. Um, my questions are, number one, are there signs at all these speed humps? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I just have a comment that I don't think it would be awful to put the um, signs back because that also deters speeding for a longer time period. So yeah. if I see a sign 40 feet before the speed hump, I'll probably already start slowing down. So then you might actually be creating a longer, slower, like a longer buffer of slow traffic, which you know, could have an un unintended consequence of slowing people down longer, honestly. Just a, you know, I don't like the idea of paying for something twice, but I kind of like the idea that people see a sign and are like pumping the brakes right away. <laughs> that makes sense too, Councillor. Uh, the, the ones on West Franklin, are, they're put in and I think they're very useful. Is, is anyone studying them to see if the speeding has stopped or are they going to study it or? We, we, I'm trying to think, I believe we did a little bit of post-installation monitoring. Um, you know, it was late in the season, so we intend to do it again this spring. Um, what we have seen, and as a, as, as a case in point, when we put in the temporary speed humps, not the race crosswalk, the temporary speed hump on Michigan Ave, you drop the average speed down a little bit, mm -hmm. but what you really help to do is to drop the number of high-speed folks down. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so you slow everybody down a little bit and generally what you do is you significantly cut down the people that are dry, driving at the, the higher rates of speed and I expect that'll be what we find here as well. And the reason I bring that up is I'm having significant issues on Pleasant Street, um, specifically once you get past Dartmouth and head up towards Northampton Street. Yeah. Um, there is a gentleman there, I mean, many of the residents are complaining, but there's a gentleman there who's a former state trooper and he used to do radar and he said you know based on his years of experience uh, it's not uncommon that people are hitting 70 plus really on pleasant street yeah. that's that's scary mm. and i know i filed this way back when when uh Councilor murphy uh, was taken over as acting mayor and i said you know could we look into the race sidewalks there and i gave some benchmarks as to along the way because there's crosswalks there yeah. Um, and that report came back, no, it wouldn't work, wouldn't work. I, I would like to revisit that because specifically what you said was we see how it 
helps slow down the high mm -hmm. speeders. And that has been the biggest complaint in that area is that there's high speeders and it's just like a straight shot up to Northampton Street shot. and then right. off to, you know, Northampton. And it's only going to take a matter of time where someone gets hit. So if you could sure. look at that again as a, as an area of raised sidewalks, I do believe if you look at Dartmouth, now I'm guessing it's been a little while, I think Princeton has uh, another uh, crosswalk. And as you go up towards uh, the hill, there's another crosswalk, I'm drawing a blank on the street. Uh, but you could put a series of them, like three of them, and it would significantly slow down that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like West Franklin. Mm -hmm. That's how I view it. Sure. Matt. Uh, Councillor Givener. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Parent, for things like this, is that are those studies that are just being done by request, or do we have to do anything extra to figure those out? Because there's speeding problems like right at the Our Lady of Cross, um, you know, the big Holy Cross Church um, on Dwight, and a couple of the neighbors there also talked about a raised crosswalk that could really slow down some of that double lane speeding traffic because it's only two lanes for like three blocks and people feel the need to you know use that as their little quick drag racing spot and meanwhile there's also lots of families that park in those neighborhoods and cross the street to go to church they're not just parking in the church crosswalk sure. i mean parking lot so i wonder like what needs to be done to have you know those kind of raised crosswalks visited in more areas you know, we certainly can look at them, and I, I think you've heard me say this before, they're not inexpensive. They can mm -hmm. be a twenty to $30,000 mm -hmm. expense because it's not just asphalt. And many times you have to modify the drainage because the raised crosswalks turn into dams mm -hmm. and they stop the water and you would have icing problems and things like that in the yeah. winter time. So many times, depending on the grade of the roadway, we might have to install additional catch basins on, if it's on a sloped roadway mm -hmm. to pick up the water on the uphill side of it to, to avoid problems. Um, if you know, if we had unlimited funds, we'd, I wouldn't say we'd put them everywhere. But <laughs> what my <laughs> my and thought rotaries process and raised crosswalks, just put them everywhere. Generally, has <laughs> been is you're trying to do two things. Yes, you're trying to control speed. You're trying to calm traffic. It's a traffic calming measure. Mm -hmm. But you're also trying to improve uh, pedestrian safety at those locations. Yeah. So places like where we have put them to date where you have Westfield Road and, and Mayor Field right there. You've got a high volume of pedestrians. You have high speeds. You're, you're really dealing with a couple of concerns at the same time. If you have to make choices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of my, my thought process is you invest where you get the greatest benefit. Not only do you calm the traffic, but you help to improve the pedestrian safety where there's a high volume of pedestrian, a potentially an at-risk population, children, elderly, et cetera. Mm -hmm that you know, would, be, would benefit most from that type of improvement in pedestrian safety. Well, there um, can... So it, if you had to ask me to prioritize, I would try to prioritize those types of locations right. first. We, we actually have applied for state funding, MassDOT funding, through something known as the Shared Streets Program the to do another right. set of raised crosswalks on Sargent Street basically to parallel the ones that were done in Franklin because we really have the same issues on Sargent as yeah. we have in Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at Homestead by uh, McMahon School mm -hmm. at, at, at Kane Road and at, um, begins with a P, I'm blanking out, it's not Pomeroy, um, the next road out by the athletic fields, again with the same thought mm -hmm. process, high rates of speed, high volumes of pedestrians, right. sensitive populations as pedestrians that you know, our, again, where that investment, you know, would pay off at the greatest level. Um, not that that investment wouldn't be warranted somewhere else, but again, choices have to get made. Well, when you say pay off at the greatest level, I think we all need to be conscious of, of that language because it becomes an equity issue if you're working on the city in concentric circles working from the outside to the most populated areas. Because I would have to argue that there's a lot more pedestrians in you know ward four than there are in ward seven so mm -hmm. if you look at it that way there's a lot of speeding and a lot more people and a lot more children and a lot more dogs and you know so 
um, I think we have to be sensitive about that too and be a little you know balanced with our sure. our look of the city and where it pays off the most it's interesting the first two raised crosswalks that were designed in the city haven't yet been installed uh. it's part of the <laughs> South Holyoke Holmes project <laughs> oh because um, you're, crossing you're waiting South for the project yeah. reading crossing Clemente to get yeah. to Carlos yeah, it's Vega really Park. Busy. Yeah. again the same concept you've got at sometimes high rates of speed you have a park you have the elderly you have children trying to get there so you get the not even going to use the word because I don't even, yeah. but you get the greatest, you're, you're really, you're achieving multiple goals at the right, same right. time. Mm -hmm. So you get the greatest benefit from the monies that you're yep. investing. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you. I thank you both. Um, I would like to recognize Kristen Sykes. She has her hand raised. Super. Uh, thank you so much. I'm a little going to be speaking as part of the bike pet discussion too, but um, I am a resident on West Franklin. I live at 280 West Franklin, um, so I'm right across from Rohan Park, and um, so I've been witnessing the benefits of the raised crosswalks. Um, I will say with regards to signage, because I walk a lot around that neighborhood, um, there is a rapid uh, flashing beacon on um, West Franklin and Pinehurst, but I don't know if Bob can comment on when it'll be flashing, but my understanding is at least that sign is there so that you can push the button and it'll rapidly flash as you're trying to get across the crosswalk. And then the other thing I'm going to say is um, I'm also the Connecticut River Valley Chapter President for Mass Bike, a statewide uh, bike advocacy group, and so I've been looking at safety and speeds um, re relative to bike and pets throughout the whole Connecticut River Valley. And there's a lot that can be done with regards to paint as far as narrowing sidewalks um, and things like that that are lower cost. And I can tell you as someone who lives on West Franklin, it's helped a bit, but it, there certainly could be more. So I just wanted to throw that in. And as I'll speak a little bit later, a uh, pedestrian was just killed a couple blocks away from those raised crosswalks a couple a week or so ago. So thanks. Thank, thank you. So we want to say the uh, order. <clears throat> So they're going to look into moving the sign so it'd be complied with. That's what I was going to yep. say, yeah. I'm just having a problem with the button. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was going to say motion to order be complied with. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> um, so item, item six. six. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item six is ordered at op ed. Uh, Councilor Rivera filed it February 15th. Israel Rivera um, ordered that the uh, op ed and city engineer and DPW explore improving, replacing fencing, cut back tall grass and brush the canal side of the street, mm -hmm. as well as what, what it would cost to install a walk bike run stretch, uh, run lane stretching from Canal Street and Northbridge Street to Canal and Appleton Street. So I feel like we've done this already. Have we spoken on this already or no? Not to my recollection. No? Okay. Great. Oh, okay. I felt like, I feel, I swear to God, I feel like we already spoke on this um, because it was brought to me that the fencing is technically holy gas and electric, right? Um, that is correct. Um, and that some of the stuff is already in the pipeline. Um, with different projects, right? That is correct. Uh, the OPED department has actually applied for what used to be MassWorks funding. It's now called One Stop Shop, similar type of funding to try to advance some improvements um, along that section. I'll say that the very first meeting I had with Mayor Garcia when I sat down with him, he flagged that as one of the areas that he really wanted to focus some attention on. So we've been trying to do that. OPED is trying to do that. As I note here, uh, one of the projects that we had put forward and, and then pushed to 23, because there's no way it could get done in 22, would be to start the design alternative process of how to enhance that corridor from basically from the South Hadley Bridge down to the Will Mansett Bridge, because there's a lot of potential there, particularly mm -hmm. when the property on the other side of the canal you right. know, gets redeveloped at some point. It, it, it could be a very appealing section of a roadway it's right now it's wide open mm -hmm. it's you know high rates of speed lots of truck traffic but there are a lot of things that could be done to bring mm -hmm. the road width down slow people down and really enhance 
that, that whole corridor. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to take some steps forward and we're looking for revenue opportunities such as cannabis impact funds, mm -hmm. given that we have a you know, significant number of can operating cannabis facilities right in that neighborhood. That, area, yeah. that clearly right. there's, a, there's a correlation uh, between traffic and them being there and also using funds to benefit the city overall, not to benefit just that one right. industry, which is I know one of the concerns that had been you know, not only are we doing something just for the industry, but doing something for the city overall. And I think this would be a case where we definitely could, you know, could make some significant improvements for everybody in the city. Yeah. And, and the intention of me filing this order was because I remember going to Six Flags when I was a kid and waiting in line, like to go into the park and you would see people jogging in Agawam on their little path next to the river and riding their bikes and all the other stuff. And I was like, we have a river in Holy or we have a canal, <laughs> right? Uh, on Canal Street, um, why can't we make Canal Street look something similar to that? All they had was like a big block of wood that went along the whole thing <laughs> and just pavement. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like it's expensive, right? <laughs> but obviously when we do it through city dollars, everything is gonna cost way more money. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was the intention of me filing, it, and I'm glad to hear that a lot of that's already in process. Um, again, this is probably another order that I would say is complied with. There is a communication from Aaron Vega, oh. and basically kind of says what Bob said. Uh, they're in the process of um, you know filing for that one-stop portal. In addition to the application, we're looking for other funds, including the cannabis impact uh, fee funds for the design and improvement of the area. So mm -hmm. uh, make sure that's just in the record that uh, Aaron Vega did respond, basically saying what Bob up to. I don't have it. Thank you, Mr. McGee, for reading that into the record because I don't have it in my packet. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it. No. I had it in the email, and, and I'm looking through the packet, and I'm like, wait. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I second your motion. That's been complied with. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Order is complied with. So. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Parent. Make a motion to take up item seven. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, item seven is February 15th, uh, filed by Councilor McGee. Order that the Public Safety Committee invite the new chair and vice chair of the Pike, the Bike Ped Advisory Committee to discuss the Bike Ped Committee projects, et cetera. Um, I will give the floor to Councilor McGee. No, I, so I do believe they're here, so we can... Okay. Turn right. over. To there you go. To them. I'm just doing. I'm just following. No, no, thank procedure. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> go ahead. You can come in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, Bob should join me. Turn on the mic. Okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> so, Councilor McGee, thank you for having just, me, Kristen, uh, today. And there you go. There you go. I'm here from the Bike Pedestrian Committee. I'm the chair, and Kristen is the vice chair. We really appreciate you having us here. Um, briefly, I want to say again, repeat what Kristen said, is there was a traffic fatality on the 16th mm -hmm. at Franklin and Beach, West Franklin and Beach, and it was a 67-year-old 60, woman named Nancy McDaniels. And um, mm -hmm. so obviously we have our raised crosswalks and we have our flashing beacons and we are still having pedestrians die. Yeah. So speed in Holyoke is excessive on every street. I live on Martin Street, and uh, I get to see at least once every decade or twice a decade I've seen someone die on either Hitchcock or Westfield mm. because people come off of uh, Route 141 around the curve going into Holyoke at unbelievable rates of speed. We lost a school teacher most recently. Um, I saw a child die in an accident there, and we need traffic calming measures all over the city. It's, it's really bad. It's been worse since COVID, and my street is basically a speedway to skip all those little lights on Route 5, mm -hmm. so we have a stop sign on there, and people easily hit 40, 50, 
and then have to slam on their brakes, which is almost seems a little more dangerous. But anyways, off my soapbox, I, uh, so Kristen and I really want to uh, work with all the other committees in the city. Um, our main objective of the Bike Peg Committee was to work as an advisory council to the city council on the Complete Streets program. So that is many years of work that is gonna be done and as Bob knows that it's gonna take a while to get that done. Kristen and I are very involved in the walking and biking community. Um, so we are trying to get, expand a little bit and, and dip our toes in other parts of what we can possibly do as a committee to help improve walking and biking in all of Holyoke. Um, we also work closely with Safe Route to Schools. They do the things like the walking school bus and um, lots of other programs, bike rodeos, bike safety for kids and whatnot. Um, bike we rodeos? had hmm? bike rodeos for kids to learn how to ride bikes okay. safely. <laughs> They're very cute. <laughs> very cute. Um, last meeting we had a presentation from the League of American Bikes bicyclists regarding the process of applying to be a bike friendly city. So we're hoping to get some support on that from the city. There's only one city in Western Mass that has the designation, that's Northampton, and they're only at the bronze level. But oh, yeah. I, think, I think with all the improvements that we have coming down the line with the Complete Streets project, we probably have a pretty decent shot of getting on the recognition list. <laughs> So we, we haven't really taken the steps forward to see what the exact application process is and what we need to do, but we, we want to talk to Aaron and see what kind of support that we can get for that. Um, we also wanna work with Walk Boston to see if there is a way to honor our pedestrians in Holyoke, residents of Holyoke who've been killed by cars so that there is that reminder and that memorial. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the bicyclists who are who are killed by cars. There's the white bicycles oh, that they put up, the memorials. So I imagine that something for pedestrians should should be out already, should already be being used, and we'd like to get in with that program here. Mm. Um, so, anyways, now I am going to introduce Kristen. Super. Well, thank you so much, uh, Councillor McGee, for the order so we could come and address yes. uh, you as well as Councillor Rivera and Gibner. Um, so as Shannon said, um, we're, a, we're a small but mighty group um, and we would love to expand our We'd also love to have a um, city council member or more attend. We meet once a month um, at the beginning of each month, every Monday at 6. Um, we really want to open up the committee to uh, the public as well, so that if folks do have um, issues with regards to um, bike ped safety or if they have some fun ideas as well, um, we want to make sure that people can participate. Uh, when Amelia Neptune from the League of American Bicyclists spoke about the Bike Friendly America program, uh, we did a press release which was translated into Spanish as well, and we did have Spanish translation available there. Um, and so we want to make sure that uh, folks can participate. Um, as Shannon was saying, with regards to um, memorializing the tragedies that we have with uh, bike and pedestrians, there is um, something called ghost shoes. They're actually white sneakers um, that you can put up. And I think it's a really good reminder um, to folks that um, there was a tragedy that happened there. And just to put a finer point on it, the intersection where um, Nancy McDaniel was killed on March 16th is uh, in the MassDOT's list of the top 200 crash clusters in the whole state. So there's almost, what, 400 towns or cities in Massachusetts, more than that. Um, this is in the top 200. Um, I understand that MassDOT is doing a road safety audit and they have a number of different alternatives they're looking at. As you all know, also uh, the high school is right there and um, it's also pretty close to the middle school, so um, I think we want to make sure that 
you know, when there are uh, bike and ped fatalities um, that they're recognized, but we would love to work with your committee and other committees in the city to make sure that um, it's safe for folks to bike and walk and uh, get around the city. And we really appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, I'm sorry I'm not there in person. I'm actually at the National Bike Summit in Washington, D.C. right now <laughs> with bike that's uh, all for, throughout the country and actually overseas. Um, so I hope you bring back some helpful uh, information to share with the city too. You look like you're down the street. <laughs> you do. Your picture makes you look Literally. like you're, you're you're down the street. You're hey, the, the wonders of Zoom. I'm at our lovely state park downtown. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, yeah. you guys, uh, do you guys work with like the other commissions as well, like Parks and Rec commissioners? Not yet. Um, so you're our first stop. Okay. And we hope to meet everybody else as well as uh, we're supposed to be working with the. Conservation Commission too, but we haven't. We've done some events with um, them, but we haven't fully met with them. All right. So far. Hmm. Do we know if they're going to? Um, I would say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Kristen. I was just going to say, I we'd also like to work with um, the committee that works with the elderly. Um, I was just doing a little research Council on, on um, pedestrian fatalities um, in the state and the majority of the pedestrian fatalities are also um, the elderly so it, we would really like to work with um, senior community too hmm. would that be the council on aging council on aging yeah okay yeah that's okay. great yeah. um uh, the other question i had is do you know if they're going to do the river rose trail thing again this year or no so that was actually a mostly south hadley yeah, event no. and i i heard that no they would probably never ever do it again <laughs> all right they had a, a lot good of, uh, they had a few volunteers and a lot of stuff to do, and it it was very taxing on them. I only heard that from the, visiting their bike ped committee. Um, as you probably know, I'm also the marketing and community outreach person for Valley Bike Share. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm involved <laughs> with all the bike ped committees in the area. I mean, it would be cool if that was so, something we could do as a community. Be so cool, and I think there's many opportunities that we could do. They things, shut down that the whole bridge, it's a highly bridge, and yeah. that's, that's I don't know if we could do that, but perhaps we could do something at one of the Holyoke Farmers Markets. I mean, that's a, an that event would, in yeah, itself, and we too, could yeah. probably create some buzz around biking and walking. Aww. That would be great. We'd be, we'd be happy to support that. We do do events, but very few because we're very small and, yeah. like Kristen said, mighty committee. but. Um, we do a bike breakfast in May for bike month That's fun. and we also hope to partner on some sort of ride or tour um, with the with the farmers market in May as well but we'll see because uh, Nairobi also does the COVID freedom walk and roll yep, and yep. that was in what September I, think I believe so yeah um, so we work with her on that as well all right Thank you. Thank you both, Thank actually, you. for your just, time. Just real quick, because um, you mentioned you meet once a month at 6 p.m. on a Monday. Yes. Could you email that to us? So yes. That, that way I can share it with the rest of the counselors, and that way they know if they want to. Absolutely. This upcoming meeting should be interesting. We're actually starting at 530 so that we can discuss this pedestrian death and come up with a letter of concern to send to the mayor on it. And then we're going to have a planning 101 um, meeting. We're going to have a guest speaker come in to tell us about planning and how the whole process works and whatnot. So uh, Dave Watson from, where's he from? Kristen, do you know? I can't remember. But we've been trying to get him in for a while, and that's going to be um, funded by uh, Mass Emotion. OK. So, and then we also are going to be talking about the breakfast coming up in May. So, we'll definitely email you. Yeah, email me so that way I can get it to everyone else. Yes, and we day. also have a place on the website now. So, okay. we have awesome. all of our notes and agendas. That's good. Oh, I, just um, I was also going to add if, um, if there are particular topics that you all are interested, like we were able to get Amelia Neptune from the League of American uh, Bicyclists to speak at our last meeting in Cheatham, D.C. You know, with Zoom, obviously we can get anyone, but, you know, we spent some time talking about 
speed tables, you know, about how to make it safer for people to walk and bike. And if there are any particular topics that you all would be interested, we'd love to host them at our bike head committee and, um, you know, would love to get more folks engaged in this since everybody's impacted, whether you're a car, a walker or a biker. So, you know, please uh, feel free to reach out to Shannon and I. We, um, we want to make sure that our uh, committee is useful to the city and to you all. I just had a question. Uh, uh, Councillor McGivner. Oh. Thank you, Councillor Rivera. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> of small and mighty committees. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I just wanted to thank you both for the work you're doing. I mm -hmm. am a huge proponent of slowing anyone in this city down. Everybody knows I'm the biggest squeaky wheel about any and every way that we could possibly figure out to get people to drive even close to the speed limit. So I really appreciate you coming in and I'm sure um, that your support will be helpful in moving some of, especially the bike safety and speeding kind of go together with, you know, Absolutely. helping every part of what we're trying to do in the city. So by creating more bikeways, it makes it more pedestrian friendly and slows down the traffic kind of by default. I love the idea of these memorial sneakers. Um, because it, it is a great reminder, you know, if you look around, I, unfortunately, I think there'll be way too many in our city, but I think there'll be a good reminder of why people need to slow down. You know, out of sight is, is not out of mind for everyone here, so I appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. so much for having us. Um, so Thank you so much. Thank you both. Say it's been complied with? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> So, uh, order complied with. <laughs> Take up item eight. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, item eight. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Item eight was filed uh, February 15th, also 2022, by uh, Councillor Givner that the Holy Board of Health publicize an email phone number to receive health related complaints i.e. order nuisance complaints generally in regard to manufacturing and commercial businesses. Um, I'll give the floor to Councillor Givener so that she could elaborate a little bit more. Um, well, we, there was a lot of um, talk recently, especially with all the um, marijuana odor uh, meetings and chatter. And even though we don't have a, it, there's haven't really been any studies, but it seemed like it was um, clear that we need more input from the public. And I think um, in general, we have a, uh, not so much a transparency problem in Holy, but people don't know what they don't know. So they don't know where to call. They don't know where to complain. They don't know where to voice their opinion. So I just thought it would be really helpful that if the Board of Health has hotlines, et cetera, that we figure out a way to publicize them more. And if they do not, I'm, I mean, I know they do, but um, clearly enough people don't know about them to, to really use them. So if we could figure out a way to publicize that information more and gather more information, it can also help with us reaching our goals of um, being more sensitive to marijuana odors coming from and you know the industry and not only that but other manufacturing and commercial business owners I like uh, I like the fact that it's not just one particular odor nuisance it's any odor nuisance in the community overall mm -hmm. um, I don't think the Board of Health is present at the moment no. he was invited but he was unavailable this evening okay so well, I'd say we table, table it so they can come in and yep. yeah we table so I'll motion the table until they are available. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is tabled. Um, entertain a motion to take up item take up nine. Item nine. Oh, second, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, item nine uh, was also filed by Councilor Givner, February 15th, um, 2022, that the city takes serious serious steps to create methods of enforcement there are, there are many ordinances and laws in place to protect citizens and support businesses 
What good are all these laws and ordinances without enforcement? Ongoing citywide enforcement issues include parking in no parking zones created specifically to aid in vis visibility for drivers and pedestrians. Parking in reserved parking zones created for businesses to receive deliveries and or include customer parking. Well over the 25 mile per hour speed limit violations, especially throughout our more populated neighborhoods, traffic light violations, stop sign violations, trash violations, storm removal violations. Um, that, that was a lot to unpack. <laughs> so again, I will give the floor to Councillor Givner so that she can elaborate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, basically, this order is meant to bring attention to the fact that we are passing many ordinances. However, we're not we're not able to enforce them or we don't have, we're, we're passing ordinances before we figure out how to enforce them. And I'd like us to pay a little attention to that because I don't think it's helpful to pass ordinances that we can't enforce. Um, so I, it's really more about creating a discussion around how we can enforce things. You know, our police force is busy um, and we are looking for ways to do things. You know, it's nice to, to see us planning with speed humps to slow down speeders and you know we're doing different sort of um, city planning to create bike lanes and narrow streets so all these things kind of come together and I think uh, solutions like that are more helpful than new ordinances that we that we're having a hard time enforcing so I guess what I'm looking for is ideas on how to enforce these things for example if we, for example, in Ward 4, there are um, no parking signs up for Eddie's Furniture in order to accommodate their deliveries. There are constantly cars parked in those parking spots. And so unfortunately, um, when they receive deliveries, they have the same problem that they had before having these right. designated parking spots, right? So whose job is it to enforce that no one parks there? Is it the Dunkin' Donuts job? Is it my job? Is it the police? Is it our police department's job? They could put Who's a Hampshire, supposed to call them? They could put a Hampshire towing sign there and it'll be a wrap. <laughs> I think there is a Hampshire <laughs> towing sign there, but you know, nobody wants to tow all the time. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, how do we enforce all these things that are intended to be helpful if they no. don't they're not really doing the job? So what's the next step? You know? I hear you on that. <laughs> um, would we want to like create like a public hearing on this and no, I, I think really getting the the chief in here because it, it's not just your area it, you know yeah, like an example right. Jarvis yeah. uh, there's no parking signs yet you'll see mm -hmm. people parking yeah. all park. along and there's the white lines that are painted where you can't park yeah. because of visibility and people will it, park there. and it's hard I, I mean the police are doing the best they can and Absolutely. you know it's that type of stuff is you know what is helpful is a constant reminder. Not every day, but like I'd call every two months. Yeah. And say they're still parking there, and then for the rest of the next two weeks, they, they pay ticket, 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 yeah. and then yeah. it kind of gets better, and then, and then it comes again. back. <laughs> it, and it, it really is. I mean, it's trying to figure out a system that will help the police to yeah. better address right. it because. And also making um, making. Uh, like our residents feel like that's the appropriate action. I think a lot of times we don't realize that that's what we do need to do in order to start to enforce these things. I mean, th there's going to be two pieces with regards to trying to get enforcement, right? There's probably going to be more money attached to that, right? Because we're going to probably need some people to monitor or do the enforcing if it's not the police doing it because the police can only do so much they can't just yeah. be there all the time just to give tickets <laughs> like, exactly. that's, it, it doesn't make any sense um but we do have like two uh people that do the the tickets for the what do you call on high street oh, the meters for the meters so i would say somewhat of an extension of that right and not saying that that's something we could do now but it's just creating a conversation of like how do you extend some of the duties Whereas, like, you're not actually arresting or doing anything. With it. You're, you're going to write a ticket. Notice. You're going to give a yeah. ticket to the person that's parked in the spot that I suppose. Michael, back to the budget. Uh, inviting the chief and the mayor. Way back when, we used to have a traffic enforcement officer. There you go. Which was, was specifically for this type of issue. Yeah. And, and they, they just go around and just violations. ticket and put in violations. That was removed from the budget a while back. 
Mm. So it might be something to bring up again because it, any ticket you give out goes right into the general fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's only a revenue producing. And, and but not it's to say not for the revenue. Right. It's not to say that we I'm want. I'm not saying it's. I know. I know. I know you're not saying that. I know you're not saying that. I just know. I heard before like the police <laughs> not are not about, about a revenue. It would, like. I've heard it before, like, oh, police are not to be work. used to create revenue. Like, that's not the idea. I, I'm not saying it's designed for it. I, I, I just, I, some people say, if, where does that money go? It president. does go into yeah, does. the general fund. <laughs> no, I'm just no. telling you how the money rolls. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. So would, would we want, is that something where we should be, or. Probably refile another order. Yeah, file a different order that requests to meet with. Um, no, no I, I'd say table this invite in the chief and the mayor and then kind of bring up the discussion points that we're doing and yeah. see where they can see if we can't try to right. get a new position that is an extension of like the parking or like you traffic, said, traffic enforcement yeah. yeah traffic enforcement okay so let's uh, chairman one second Co councilor molden uh, oh go ahead jeff I just wanted to let you know that police chief is on zoom no I, I know he's there i know he's there it's just that uh I mean, if he wants to weigh in, he can weigh in too as well. Uh, yeah, Chief Pratt, if you want to weigh in, you're you're able to weigh in. He loves public safety. I just don't like. I just I just didn't want to waste any of your breath on on <laughs> us trying to like get you to come back again with Josh present. <laughs> but if you want to weigh in, Chief Pratt, that's a no. I'm happy to weigh in. Um, I, I noticed that Councillor uh, Velez had his hand up way before you called on me. All right then. Uh, 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 Councillor Velez. Thank you, Chair Ryan. Thank you, Chief Pratt. Um, I'm, I guess um, my point is just that the next order that you put in place, um, or the next order in the agenda having to do with the coalition and stuff, sort of has to do with this because I think yeah. you know the police is expected to do a lot. There, I mean, there is a lot that is being put on the police enforcement, one of them, but I think that is also connected with. If they are focusing on enforcement of parking, then there's these other things that are not being addressed with. So I'm wondering if we can just take these two up together because I think they're really connected with each other. Which one? Ten. 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 Oh, ten, ten. If you want, you can Open suspend point. the rules, take up ten as well as part of the discussion. Motion to suspend the rules and take up ten second. as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, then perfect. <laughs> so ten is filed by Councilor Rivera, Is Rivera, and Tal Peter Tallman, Councilor Tallman that the city council invite the mayor, community development, parks and recs department, as well as public health to a public safety committee and discuss developing some form of community coalition around addressing homelessness, substance abuse, and youth programming. I think police is supposed to be there too as well, but for some reason it's not. Um, let me read the communication from Mayor Garcia first before we go on any further, because damn, it's pretty long. <laughs> Um, so he couldn't be present and he just gave me a communication to read off um, so that way he gives us it's pretty much an update of what's happening um, dear committee members through the chair my apologies I couldn't participate in your meeting tonight regarding the above order please be advised we have initiatives both on the ground and in the works that specifically address homelessness substance abuse youth programming and more Homelessness and addiction are top issues for me and often the main subject of any conversations with, of, wait, 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 with stakeholders, including our state and federal delegations and regional local partners. Additionally, we are working with Ed Case at the Hamden County Sheriff's Department, who is spearheading to help create and implement a Holyoke Hub. Regular gatherings of state and local human service workers and law, law enforcement to come together to the table to share resources and increase the efficiency of interventions. We also are working on the creation of coming to the table to share a, a homelessness liaison position in city government. I'm going to have to read along with my pen. This past winter, the city organized pop-up warming shelters that offered wraparound services to those individuals in need during moments of freezing temperatures. Moreover, I have contacted the offices of Senator Warren and Representative Neal in order to collaborate and have these initiatives supported among other tasks our offices can par partner in to help address the community needs and subject. We also look forward to working with Holyoke Roca at 384 High Street, whose mission is to engage young adults who are at risk of becoming involved in urban violence and lawbreaking. I also have established mayoral advisory councils to take on the city's most urgent issues and recommend courses of action. These advisory councils include, but are not limited to, public safety and public health, 
In order to best address the community's most pressing health and safety concerns, your advisory in public safety and public health will work with the fire, police department, public works, schools, and public health nonprofits that work in public health field and the larger community crisis intervention other referrals issues property preservation trash homelessness addiction are among the issues this council will address community col collaborations and communications oh wow um i'm not youth gonna development yeah youth development <laughs> right 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 <laughs> moreover we have a community service center in the steam building at 208 ray street where our local police officers and human services including narcotics prevention officers and recovery coaches from the behavioral health network among other organizations work together to try to stem the opioid, opioid epidemic, curtail elder abuse, and address other issues that affect the community. This program is an alternative method to the traditional policing that helps people get the support they need. Several department heads, including our CDBG director, attend the Western Mass Network to end homelessness meetings. The network creates collaborative solutions across Hamden, Hampshire, Franklin, and Berkshire counties to prevent and end homelessness through a housing first approach that centers racial equality or equity. It provides coordinated responses to state and federal funding opportunities, coordinated advocacy and state budget policy priorities, annual regional gatherings to review impact and exchange resources. Lastly but not least, the City of Holyoke through Holyoke Chicopee Westfield Home Consortium received approximately three point three million in home ARP funds to assist individuals or households who are homeless at risk of homelessness and other vulnerable populations. By providing rent housing, rental assistance, sur support services and congregate shelter to reduce homelessness and increasing housing stability. We have these programs and initiatives because Holyoke, for as long as I have grown up and lived here, has been a place of compassion, second chances, new hope, and opportunity. And I'm going to do what I can to align our partnerships so that we are achieving the efficiencies we need to produce effective outcomes. Beyond our support services and program programs available, I have taken a hard position on zero tolerance for distribution of drugs on our streets that are ruining lives and devastating our neighborhoods and contributes to the main social many of social issues we see today and I am working with our law enforcement partners to carve a very different path for our heartless drug dealers pushing poison on our streets the people of the, the people of Holyoke and children that occupy and play playgrounds deserve much better thank you Mr. Chairman, Chairman and City Council for your time if you have any further questions I can be sure to plan and coordinate with the Board of Health Director CDBG Director Parks and Rec and plan to attend the next Public Safety Committee meeting um, so that was a lot. I might need a sip of water. Um, Chief, if you want to elaborate on what we were talking about before, I came along and read the very long um, message from, I believe, uh, Mr. Uh, Councilor Velez, were you all set after that? Yeah, I was all set. I just wanted to take up both orders because they seem sort of like related with each other as far as like enforcement, because I think that's the biggest question really in our city. and. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you for that. Um, Chief, you want to elaborate on the other topic before we move on to this one real quick? Um, sure. Um, I, I do know that, uh, you know, through the budget, I have um, put in for uh, additional officers. I, I, could see a, I could see a path where the, if that, you know, clears the... Uh, budget cuts that we could potentially designate a traffic officer to handle a lot of those things. Um, but, you know, I guess we'll see with the budget. Uh, as far as a lot of the other things, we do, we do currently have a code enforcement officer that does go out and handle some of those issues um, that are listed in the in, uh, Council Gibner's order. Um, so that does happen. Um, with one of our officers already currently, um, our code enforcement officer. So again, um, I guess we'll just wait and see how the budget comes out. Do we know how frequent the code enforcement officer goes out to act, to like, inf I don't want to sit be like to say enforce code, but like to do his job? He's, like, he's a Monday through Friday, uh, you know. Well, I mean, just to see like, if, like if, if he's writing like, what, like what, what's the the rate of like tickets he's writing or something like that? Um, it's not all tickets. It's um, you know, there's obviously many things. Um, yeah, I can't, there's a laundry list of things: trash, <laughs> snow yeah. removal, um, all all the you know. Yeah, I know he's been dealing with uh, 
most recently like legally parked boats mm. um, yeah. things like along those nature um, that we get a lot of complaints on and those go there he works directly out of uh, City Hall with the Board of Health too okay. so um, he gets you know things from them as well and goes out with them and, and assists them on, on, on their stuff as well yeah. but he does work Monday through Friday I mean barring if he takes a day off or, or whatever for the most part he's out there every day thank you um, and then with regards to the order that I filed um, which is order number 10 um, and the purpose of me ordering filing the order um, and, I, and, I, and I saw that uh, Mayor, Mayor Garcia has uh, three different advisory um, commissions around public safety and public health, community col collaborations and communi communications, and youth development. Um, that's um, awesome. I, I I applaud him on that, and I I'm with it 110. Um, percent What I what I'm kind of requesting is a little different in a sense that um, I am seeing. I, I would like to see if we could get a variety of different something similar to what he mentioned with the Holyoke hub but the Holyoke hub I'm going to ask them to come in and present to the council too as well I'm kind of I'm kind of working with Ed Case that on that project too as well um I inherited that while I was working at the schools um but um that is a different topic more or less because that is more focused on helping an individual whereas what I'm trying to do with the coalition is um how do you say it um, improve communication amongst all of our service providers within the community. So it, w what I mean is like the communication between the police department and the mental health departments, between the medical, uh, between Holyoke Health Center, between Holyoke Hospital, between the school department, um, quarterly meetings amongst each other, sharing projects, sharing what initiatives they're all moving forward with. So that way we're all talking the same language and the same lingo. Um, it's something that Holyoke is kind of been doing on a smaller scale, but I kind of want the city council and city politics to be involved in it, making it a larger citywide initiative. Um, that way we're all knowing what's happening on the ground versus just having them come to the council and just presenting to us every once in a while. Um, and I was wondering if that was something that the Public Safety com Commission can try to like partner with this, the mayor and the, and the police department and identify different um, mental health agencies, substance abuse agencies that could come together probably quarterly to come and just hash out, possibly townhouse style, trying to figure out what what are the problems that are happening in the community um, and how we can better our relationships through communication, right? Um, if we're servicing, if I'm servicing as a service provider, a particular individual that, um, Possibly Chief Pratt has been coming across in his line of work. Our communication amongst each other is going to help service this person in the long run. Um, so for me, it's improving that communication overall. Um, I'm willing to table this until we can get everyone else all together. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Chair. Councilor Givner. <laughs> um, it seems to me that those are the kind of things that the public safety and public health, along with the community co collaborations and communications um, count, um, advisory councils would be working on, kind of, um, it seems like it, that is exactly what their focus is on. Uh, so I'm wondering- So I guess my question is, have they met yet? And yes. How many? How frequent do they meet? Who are the representatives there? Who are the people, who are the players at the table? Because for me, well, they each have a chair, and you can but those go are, to their meeting. So those are three different committees mm -hmm. that are going to be having three different conversations, right? right? Their purpose is, is city communication. Not necessarily. Each other. Yeah. All right. Not, not, I didn't get that from any of that. <laughs> I, what I got was public safety and public health. We'll deal with public safety and public health. Community collaborations and communications will do whatever they're doing, what they're doing. Every department will do focus on their thing. And to me, it's to eliminate silos, right? Possibly they'll communicate amongst each other with chairs. But if they can do a full meeting of all of them together to then exchange ideas and build relationships, it's a different, it's kind of a different thing. For me, in my opinion, because I've experienced it in some of the meetings that Eddie Case has held himself with like 60 different service providers and everyone sharing their information. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if, if it ends up happening, right, 
or maybe and if we table it and they come in and all of them and that's exactly what it is and that's exactly what it is right mm-hmm. but it was something that I feel like I don't know I didn't know he was going to do something like this right this is something I filed before he <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, before I saw this um, but if it ends up coming together then it comes together right and if if, if it ends up being two different things then it's yeah, two different things right uh, Councillor Maldonado Velez um, thank you, Chair. Um, through the Chair to Chief Pratt, um, I know we're having a one-on-one on Thursday, um, and some of these questions are going to come up then, but I guess I'd ask it out to the public. Um, I was driving down Wedding Farms the other day, and I saw a social worker with a police officer um, talking to an individual. I don't know if they were homeless, I don't know, uh, substance abuse, whatever, I don't know what the situation was. Um, but that tells me that Clearly, we're, we're, we are trying to have a different approach to what policing looks like. So I'm just wondering if you can really talk about what that uh, has looked like so far in our community, um, and pairing up with social workers and um, how we can possibly ex- um, expand it, or I, I, I guess what your initial thoughts are around that and how, how it has worked with Hobio. I'd be glad to talk about it. Um, the mayor touched on it briefly in the letter. Um, the Ray Street office, uh, I'm very proud of that office and, and what they're accomplishing down there. We have uh, officers assigned um, specifically for opioid addiction to follow up with residents who are struggling and get them in the services that they need. Um, we partner with the sheriffs who also um, assist us in that and and um, not just us dealing with Hoyoke residents but a lot of times we deal with people from other communities who come to Hoyoke who have drug addiction problems and then we pass that information out to the sheriff and they go out and follow up with those uh, residents in other neighborhoods. Um, as far as the mental health we also have an officer assigned with a VHN counselor um, our officer works 8 to 4, the council works noon to 8, and from 4 to 8, we have a detail that goes out, and they primarily handle, um, they'll handle calls that come in while they're working, uh, crisis calls, but they, that's probably what you saw. Um, I, I could look at, I don't know the specific incident you're speaking of, but I, I'm sure that's what it was. And the other thing they do is they go back in the log, and they look at calls that we have been on for crisis, and they do follow-ups. Um, and go and reach out to those people that were in crisis maybe a week ago or, or a few days ago and go back and now when the situation is much more calm and um, things have you know settled a little they could go back and work with those people as well with the BHN counselor to see if there's other services that they need or other things that are um, potentially adding to that uh, mental health crisis so um, it's been very successful. We've been at it for quite some time. I think that's uh, one of the things we tried to do through our um, increased social media and, and getting the word out to the public as to, to what's going on down at Ray Street, um, our community office down there. There's also recovery coaches that work right out of the office for people that uh, suffer from addiction. Some We have people that have come, started in our program and have come all the way around and are now recovery coaches for us. So um, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been a really, really positive thing. And I think that the Hoyle Police Department has been on the forefront of this long before people were talking about it, we were already doing it. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. And um, I wanna keep that going. And as far as expanding it, like everything, it takes money. It takes, uh, you know, commitment. Most of that entire programs down there are all grant funded. And um, we'll, we'll continue to shoot for those grants and those things that can help us, uh, you know, continue that. Anything we can do to expand it, we, we're on board. Um, question real quick. Are the, um, how are the officers trained in delivering the, like, the outreach and human services? Like, do they, do they take like a training or do they have like some form of classes that they take at HCC at human, in the human services program? Um, or they just rely on their training from their, their police training? Um, so yeah, all, our uh, department a while ago went to, um, we are all, uh, not all, 
all of us at this current moment. COVID put a little damper on some of that, but they were sent to a 40 hour crisis intervention training. Um, the officers that were obviously directly out of that office have had it. We've tried to get all our officers trained in that. I think our last count, we were somewhere in the 60 something percent range and that had dipped from when we were much higher. But a lot of that was, you know, due to COVID, we would, you know, officers would retire and there was no training classes due to COVID that we could, you know, keep our numbers up. I'm hopeful that, you know, in the long term, that'll become part of, say, like the training that they get in the academy. I think you'll see that in time. Um, maybe that'll become part of the, the base training for police officers. And that way, when they come to us, they'll already have it. Um, that might be a little ways off as well, but um, our goal is to get as many into that training as we can. Um, so that's the training they get. Of course, they rely too as well on their police training um, and their experience. And um, and of course, they have a you know a BHN counselor with them. So um, you know, clearly, it's like. Uh, you know, we're all first responders, but if we're in the room with a doctor, we kind of turn it over to them, right? So we, we know our place, um, we're there to assist and to help, and, um, and our officers are uh, really, really um, up to speed on that and have come a long way in recognizing that, how important that is for us to have those services. You know, I'm talking about the officers on the street. You'll hear them call, for these officers that are with the BHN counselor to come to their call because they know that's the services they need. Thank you. Uh, counselor Jenny Rivera. Hi, thank you. Um, so, Chief Pratt, I have a question for you on that. No, I'm not sure if you already had answered, but I didn't hear. But I have a family, um, has a 20 year old. It's going through crisis. They were called, they called the hospital on Saturday to see if they could get them in, but they have not been able to do so. Is that something you can help this family with? He's got a problem with addiction. It's a section for me. 100%, you know, um, I reach out, give me a name, give me an address, but we can send those officers over there. If they've been there, if our officers have already responded to that location, I can almost guarantee you that there's follow-up coming for that family through that those services where they will come back to that family and continue to um, check in with them and make sure that they are getting the services they need and will assist in any way we can. Okay, perfect. I will email you the information. Thank you. 100%, no problem. Um, any other questions? Councillor Joe McGivern. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the uh, the meeting and the uh, discussion here. Um, I, I'd like to get back with uh, Chief Pratt to uh, Councillor Gibner's um, order on the agenda, and uh, thank Councillor Maldonado Velez for combining these because they do go hand in hand. But there's some coalitions that I think we have to be careful about. And, and I'm all in favor of the collaboration. I'm all in favor of the efforts of what the police department does, both with DMH and uh, with substance abuse, because that's, that's part of the, the issues that, that we face as a city and the police department faces as a police department. But, you know, Chief, you, you, you talk about the budget and getting a traffic control officer. You currently have a $13 million budget. It's one of the highest budgets for a police department in Western Massachusetts. You told the finance committee last night you have a shortage of uh, patrol officers for reasons that are not, not in your control, but you, your patrol officers, granted by grants, are doing some wonderful, wonderful things at Ray Street. Um, I believe that they're still feeding the Motel 6 with clients up there, and yet when Councilor Gidner asked the question about enforcing parking on Hampton Street to help out a business known as Eddie's Furniture, we don't have the resources to do that. I think we lost. No, I, I, no I, 
I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. No, go ahead. I hear you. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, I think, Joe, what I was re- referring to there was they were asking about an officer or, you know, assigned to do that permanently every day. Do our officers go up if we get called? To, of course, you know, at Eddie's Furniture. I know uh, recently uh, the counselor filed about, you know, the um, cars parking too close to the corners on Hamden Street, and we have addressed that um, by O'Connor and also further up by Nonatuck. Um, we did issue some tickets up there and, and did address that. So when, when we get the calls, of course, um, I think they were asking more specifically tonight about assigning an officer permanently to that as his only function to go around and write tickets. And that's what I was referring to as far as if, you know, in the budget, if I could see myself doing that with, as you mentioned, you know, we are low on numbers right now. We have to put more into the academy in June and July. Um, so to just designate one guy just to go around and write parking tickets, um, I, I don't have that ability right at this second, but certainly we can respond to anything. Well, I, and I think that's important because I think enforcement, especially with uh, traffic ordinances or, or speeding or issues like that, when you respond, you write a ticket, it tends to, uh, the problem tends to go away when people know that there are people out there uh, enforcing the ordinances. And I think Councilor Gibner's uh, order is right on target that enforcement is a key part of, we can write all the laws we want, but if we don't have enforcement of the ordinance, then the, the ordinance is useless. And, and it goes hand in hand where, you know, I, I understand the efforts, but if you're spreading yourself thin by putting officers on Ray Street, and putting officers in, in collaboration with DMH and doing social service works for which there's a ton of money that comes in through the state to uh, agencies that are supposed to be doing this, and we don't have enough officers to enforce the laws, then I think we, we create a problem in itself. Thank you, C- Councilor McGivern. Um, not nah, so like he just kind of like harped on some one of the things that I thought of at the same time where it's like um, at Ray Street there's a lot of stuff I knew like I've heard about Ray Street for like I think it's been happening like three or four years now right Chief or maybe more that's correct about three right. years right um so I used to do similar work with the Holyoke um save not not Holyoke is it not it's not Holyoke Safe and Successful Youth Initiative that, that's yes Holyoke Safe and Successful Youth Initiative it's close to Eddie Case's Holyoke um, Safe Neighborhood Initiative that's why I get confused um, we used to do some of the similar work with outreach and reaching out to younger guys similar to what Roca does um, so like I I'm totally with like the whole movement and the whole thing that's happening on Ray Street I just think that it would be cool or it would be interesting to see that if in the future or within time if we can get some of the people that are going through the processes and possibly graduating from HEC with their human services degrees that have gone through it to kind of replace some of the police officers that are in that position and it would alleviate for the police officers to then go back to doing police work and then having some of the people in the community that have gone through this do some of the outreach work and um like partner with police on that process. I mean, obviously you guys have been doing it for the way you've been doing it for three or four years now, but it's like to see if there's a way to kind of like gradually get that wave going. Because um, for me as an ex-felon, right, um, coming out of prison, uh, I didn't really have as many resources. And I know a lot of other people that are coming out are feeling the same way. And I was fortunate enough to meet people that put me on the right path immediately, right? Not everyone has that. So like, the ROCA program, mentioning that, that's that's awesome, right? Um, the Ray Street um, um, initiative that you guys have over there, that's an awesome project. But those are just uh, two programs that are happening for people that are being released from prison with either addiction issues or formerly used to used to have issues selling drugs or whatnot or gang involvement. Um, I'm thinking that as a community, um, they're there has to be something else for at least adults, mothers, um, people that are going through the processes to, 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 to try to get help too at the same time. And I mean, if they're getting successful, 
there's 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 different jobs in the community that they could help the community uplift. Um, sort of like myself trying to run for city council with my background and all this stuff. So it's like trying to get other people to do something similar. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but I, at the end of the day, it's trying to get some of that. And I appreciate what you guys have been trying to do um, to combat some of that so far, to be honest. Because be, um, our community is a lot more fo forward thinking than a lot of other places across the country. Um, but yeah, just wanted to say that. Um, anybody? I think I, you know, I, I, I think I should add that um, I, I hear what Council McGivern is saying. But I think it's also important to understand that what these officers are doing by participating in these programs, it's collaborations. I think that there can always be more. Um, the Hoyo Cult that we're leaning towards uh, with any case that you spoke of, I'm well aware of it because we're participating in that as well, um, is trying to bring more resources to the table, um, more stakeholders that can help where, where needed. But um, I can tell you from experience that um, these officers are handling a portion of, uh, I don't think we should look at it just that, you know, they're, they're doing social work because they're doing more than that. And that by providing what they're doing out there with people that are addicted and, and, you know, consequently homeless as well, that that is also freeing up, um, some of our officers who would deal with those issues before. Um, I can tell you from experience, when I was a young narcotics officer, I would be the one being sent to handle, uh, you know, people shooting up in alleys and hanging out here or there, you know, um, addicted users. And I was a narcotics officer and I was being pushed that way. And these officers are now doing that, which allows our narcotics officers to focus on the people that are, are dealing the drugs, which is what we, you know, ultimately, you know, as the mayor's initiative was about, was, you know, um, going after those people with our resources. So it's really a team effort, and I and I can tell you that it's it is working, and I have seen firsthand, um, you know, where people that were on our radar, and when I say that, I mean coming up on our police log for trespassing and shoplifting and these type of crimes that are usually associated with drug addiction, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, they seem to disappear off our police log once we start interacting with them through the race street people, pushing them into services, constantly going back and trying to get these people there. So, so there is a benefit uh, for the police department um, by having these officers assigned there. And um, it's not always right on the forefront or apparent, but it is, it is happening. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. So I would like to entertain a motion to table it so that way. So you're tabling nine and 10? No, not nine and 10. I guess, yeah, they're a package, right? But you, know, you can take them up separately. I just want to know what your table's for. I would table 10. What about, nine. so nine? There is one, um, there is one code, one full-time code enforcement officer, correct, Chief Pratt? That's correct. So. That's correct. Unless we're looking to add staff, it is complied with, I guess. Right? Right, so make a motion at nine, it's been complied with. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, item nine has been complied with. 10, make a motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, 10 has been tabled. Um, and then we have the following items are on the agenda for the purpose of disposal. So the following items that we have, which is item 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. <laughs> <laughs> so make a motion to spend the rules, take up 11 through 18 as a package. Wait, wait. Second. One second, one second, Jeff. Jeff outlined something for me earlier and he put a whole bunch of X's. <laughs> I'm trying to find out. He said that 11, 12, 13, 15 are already complied with, actually. Which ones? 11, 12, 
Well, uh, they've already been taken care of, so you can... 13 and 15, and then the other ones we can leave with a draw. All right, okay. so 11, 12, 13, 15. So Comply. All right, so... Make a motion. So take up 11, 12, 13, 15 as a package. Second. And then All in we favor. have to read them into the record, and then yep. we'll say motion to comply. All in favor. Um, so the item 11 is filed by Councilor McGee, Leahy, and Tallman, November 21st of 2017. <laughs> In a while. <laughs> Order that Captain Moriarty uh, provide an updated list of safety options or procedures put in place to deal with the security safety at City Hall, subcommittee meetings, and full council meetings. Mm -hmm. um, 12 is, uh, was filed 8420 by Anderson, Juan Anderson Burgos, Councilor Ann Juan Anderson Burgos. Ordered that a traffic study be done on Sergeant Street, observing traffic between St. Jerome and Sycamore. Residents have mentioned several accidents in this area, possibly due to the speed and obstructed views as vehicles travel around the bend. They have suggested a four way st stop it may be helpful at either Magnolia or Sycamore. Item 13 was also filed 8 4 2020 by Councilor Anderson Burgos. Ordered that a traffic study be done. Th at the corner of West Franklin and St. Jerome, residents are concerned about vehicles traveling down West Franklin at high speeds and potential for collision with vehicles with an obstructed view driving off of St. Jerome because of the bend in the road. They are asking for either speed homes or a four-way stop. 15 is uh, was filed January 5th of 2021 by Juan Anderson Burgos, um, Graney, oh, and Graney Jr., Order that the city engineer look into potentially changing the driveway into People's Bank off of B Street to only be an entrance. There have been safety concerns related to the slope of the driveway, leading cars out of the property into the pra traffic that is often rushing to make the light. Uh, so, motion, entertain a motion. Motion that they're all complied with. All in favor? Aye. Items 11, 12, 13, and 15 have been complied with. Make a motion to take up 14, 16, 17, 18 as a package. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item 14 um, was filed 8-4, um, 2020, by Councillor Murphy. Order that the Public Safety Committee meet with the representatives from any neighborhood watch programs to discuss any ideas about improving each program and building an active cooperation with the police department. Um, item 16. It's filed um, February 16, 2021. Uh, Councilor Murphy, Vacan, and Graney order that the Public Safety Committee meet with the principal of Holyoke High School, the receiver, the mayor, the police chief, and the vice chair of the school committee to discuss concerns about materials being promoted within the high school, which seem to only further alienate the community from the police department. As an example of things to do instead of calling the cops is don't feel obligated to defend property, especially corporate private property. <laughs> before confronting someone or con contacting the police. Ask yourself if anyone is being hurt or in danger by property theft or damage. If th the answer is no, then let it be. The goal of the order is to build a greater understanding and respect between the police and the community. Item 17 um, was filed April 6, 2021 by Councilor Murphy. Order that the council work with the city solicitor, the police chief, and our state legislative delegation if needed to put in place significant penalties for dirt bikers and other endangering the public with their tactics on public streets. This is both a quality of life issue and public safety issue that needs addressing. Item 18 um, filed, was that May? May 4th, 2021 by <laughs> Councilor Vacan. Uh, the acting mayor, that the acting mayor and city council president pr Present a plan and target date for opening City Hall and resuming City Council meetings at City Hall. Uh, entertain a motion for <laughs> leave with withdrawal. Motion is to give leave to withdraw for those one, two, three, four. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, all of them are leave with withdrawal. I'll entertain a motion. Motion is to adjourn. Oh. I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you guys for a good night. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. I see you over there. <laughs>